Hello guys, welcome to the channel Nigel's Model Bench here and uh, welcome back to part 17 now of the A20G Havoc build from Hong Kong Models. This has become like the Hong Kong Models channel hasn't it over the last few days. All I've done is Hong Kong Models reviews and now I'm doing a Hong Kong Models build. So um, here we go. So uh, this is part 17 as I say. This is how far we've got. We've done all the cockpit and everything. If you haven't already seen please go take a look. There is a playlist for this so you can go and just watch them all as you go through. There is stuff in here for beginners, there's bits and pieces you can pick up on and um, lots of hints and tips about this, that and the other. We've done the Bombay as I can show you here. Here's the Bombay um, and you can see we've got all the Edward photo etch in there and drilled out all these holes to make it look a lot more realistic. They're all moulded as circles on the kit rather than drilled out so I've drilled them out. And it makes them look a lot nicer. Same as I've done here. I've drilled these holes out here. They weren't marked out. I've had to draw those. Uh, those weren't marked out. I've had to draw those, I think. Were they marked out? I can't remember now. And those there, um, I've had to drill out as well. So those there won't be seen really. But these here, you'll probably see them if you look down through that glazing on the top. Hong Kong Models clear parts tend to be some of the best in the industry. Um, and very very clear so it's always worth paying attention you'll see that there's some ejector pin marks remaining they're going to be covered up or completely invisible anyway so I've got rid of the ones that were obvious but as I say you're not going to see a lot down in there when you look up in this hatch here up in the bottom you're not going to see a lot as you can see when it's all closed up um, you know you can't really see much of it all at all because it's quite dark in there so uh, you know it's not worth worrying about it too much but we will do some dry brushing and stuff and bring it all to life just like we've done in the um, in the bomb bay. I haven't put any bombs in currently because I may not we, we shall see what happens but you can see on there we've done the the weathering and the post shading the pre-shading and we've got it all sort of looking used and worn and everything which is what we want we don't want to go too mad with it but we just want it to look used and worn so um there we are right and then when that goes in there as you can see what happens is the it's not fitted correctly there we go that's correctly so you can see now when the bomb bay doors are open all these holes they're all very very obvious so I would, I would thoroughly recommend opening all them up there as I say they're molded closed in the plastic I would say mold them up the ones like this here that are raised um, leave those they are actually plated over for some reason uh, so leave them don't, don't don't go drilling them out but there are some um, where is it there's actually there it is there's one there, there's a raised one here. Let me get the light a bit better for you. It's probably light over the front. There's a raised one. Where is it gone? There. You can see between those two up on that second row. There's a raised one. That's actually photo etch. Um, but uh, as as I say, you can't really see a lot of it with all these. These 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 are floors for additional bomb uh, for additional fuel tanks. And also you've got your bomb racks going across. And if you put your bombs in. You won't see hardly any of it, but uh, I think it's worth doing. It's a nice little set and it doesn't cost too much either. Uh, so there we go. And you can see here what I've done. All the backs of these holes are all, I've got in with a, a burr and um, sort of thinned them out so that the edge of the plastic is, is a lot thinner. So it looks, you can see along here, so it looks like sheet metal rather than great big thick bits of chunky plastic. So there we are. Right. So when I left you last time, we were working on the cockpit. As you can see, we've got the cockpit there and I showed you about pre-shading and how to paint in the Edward photo etch. So it actually looks like it's part of the cockpit rather than just bits of photo etch stuck on. There's a bit of a gap around that one there, but I'm not going to worry about it because you're only ever going to see it from that angle. So you're not going to see the gap anyway. Um, and then there's some more photo etch to go in here. We will be using it all. And then we've got these panels in here. In the sides we've got some little knobs to go in there and you can see in the bottom of this box I've done this, this little pot here you can see these tiny little switches which are basically pieces of pre-painted red photo etch and they're folded in half and glued together and then we've got that box there which is going to go along the top of the starboard side next to the pilot there's another one of those switches and then there's this box here you get that let me just put all this back in there make sure we don't lose anything We've got three switches, that's right. And um, and usually, Edward usually give you extras, but in this case they haven't. We've got this little box here, which is basically a piece of photo etch 
folded up and then you've got a panel on the front and then there's a knob in the top right hand corner so you've got this panel on the front here you've got the beige piece there which is all folded up oops chucking it around the room and that is basically going to get glued onto there like that so you can see it's all starting to look very very busy now I'm not going to bore you with doing all this I, I will just say one thing something I always do with photo etch with these boxes put a bit of plastic inside them and then what we can do is scrape the paint off of there and we can glue that on then with plastic cement rather than have a just the edge of the you can imagine if this is the edge of the photo etch and you're gluing that onto there it's just literally that tiny edge with super glue whereas if you put a block of plastic in there like that then you can actually get a good welded joint there with you can put some super glue on as well if you want um, and I've also done the same although you can't see it this little box on here that's folded up I've actually put a piece of plastic in there just to increase the area that it's being glued down to so um, you can see the Edward instructions here um, there's that box that's beige all folded up and then there's the panel on the front and then there's the knob on the front of that so uh, all good stuff right so I'm gonna carry on and do this I don't really want to bore you to death with watching all this but all I'm doing is basically cutting the pieces off of the panel and then gluing them on okay so uh, I'll see you in a minute I said I wasn't gonna show you this but I want to show you this little bit so I'm zoomed right in here so you can see here we've got this part here 11 and it has to be rolled and then glued to the top of there and you've got to put these levers in now the problem with this is you've got a tiny little contact area on the ends you've got to try and get those levers in if you do it before you fit it onto there it's all just going to fall apart so this is the way I'm doing it I suggest you perhaps try the same so what I've done I've got this part 11 which is basically the the quadrant there you can see that piece of photo actually there and I've rolled it and what I've done I've got a 7000 grit soft sponge and the reason I'm using 7000 grit is purely because it's, it's very very fine and it won't scratch the paint uh, and all I'm doing is coming along with this is actually one of my um, this is actually one of my holding clamps I've got to remember I've have no focal length here focal range so just roll that on there okay go right off the end so you don't get any flat spots okay and then what we're gonna do is turn that over just like so and then I've got a piece of 5,000 plastic card and I'm just going to get that and I'm going to stick that on there with a little tiny drop of super glue I'm going to stick it to the plastic card then what I'm going to do is put the levers in and then we can put some glue in from the side and it will sort of become a one big mass of super glue well not one big mass but there'll be like a puddle of super glue underneath holding all the levers in and then once we've done all that we can cut it out we can go around the edge with a black pen or something just to make sure the white card is covered up and then that is going to glue into there you can see those little two areas there that's going to glue in there now when you look like that into the cockpit you're not really going to see it but we may see it from this side we shall see but um you know if you if you're only doing what you can see you kind of have to wonder why you're bothering doing it at all because modeling is for me modeling is about the enjoyment of building if you don't put your models in shows then who's ever going to look at them so why are you doing it you're doing it because you enjoy building them so that that's just my opinion um so i'm going to get that done now i'm going to get that super glued onto there with a tiny drop of super glue and then we'll get the levers in we can see we've got the levers on here tiny tiny little levers on there and uh, get those get the ends folded over get them glued in and then uh, get some of this other stuff glued in and then I'll be back to show you how we make it all look like it's actually part of an airplane cockpit and not just loads of bits of photo etch all glued on okay so as you can see here we've got the all the photo etch in so there is a there's a photo etch panel there there obviously there's that box we've got a panel up here with the red box on it and then we've got that um where's my pointer that plastic knob is there that's part h65 i think it is that's part of the kit and then going on to this side we've got that i don't know if you're going to be able to see these but we've got that um let's get this light out of the way we've got this quadrant in here with the throttles in it or whatever they are the levers and uh so that's gone in but as you can see if you look at these levers these knobs here as you can see 
they actually look like two bits of metal folded in half and glued on and we want to make them look like one knob so <laughs> yeah um, so what we need to do is actually take away the metallic look and make it all look a bit more sort of realistic so we're obviously going to use some washes and some dry brushing and stuff the other thing I just wanted to say quickly here's the sheet now we've got some bits and pieces on here these three discs here you're supposed to fold in half and glue onto the front of there I'm not going to bother because I think they'll just fall off um, I don't really see why they're there I mean, they, they look like they should be gauges or something but if they're gauges they wouldn't be sticking out and they're good I think they're going to look horrible so I'm not putting them on and then the other bits and pieces here we've got a couple of bits here for the turret we've got the uh, throttle quadrant there that I'm not using because I had the plastic kit part was lovely and I used the um, air scale one didn't I um, here's the uh, placards that go on but I believe they are for uh, Russian aircraft because it seems that all the placards that are black and white seem to be for Russian I don't, I'm not sure if these red bits and pieces I'm, I'm not sure if that should be there you know in a wartime aircraft I don't know um, but it looks good doesn't it so all of these bits here you can see there's there's these pieces here this one this one they are you fold them up to make the boxes well I actually used blocks of plastic rather than folding up PE boxes because they just stick better to the model and then you got you know a nice flat surface to glue to so that's that so this can go back in um, so we've pretty much finished with that color for it other than a couple of little bits and pieces for the turret so what I'm going to do now is call in the this is um game color this is a lovely brushable red paint and I've got my wet palette here so got a tiny little brush and what we're going to do is come along and we're going to with the paint quite thick we're going to put the paint on here okay and that will actually go on I need to do this under a magnifier let me see if I can get a magnifier across here and see through it and have you still be able to see what I'm doing can you still see what I'm doing? I can't even see the bloody screen. Let's have a look. If it doesn't work, I'll edit it out. But um, basically, I can look through here and I can see that I can put some paint on there, put some paint on that one, and put some paint on that one. And all we're trying to do, I can't do this on camera and I'll, I'll turn the camera off and I'll come back and there you go sorry about that guys I just can't really see anything but, uh, there you go you can see how much more realistic those knobs look now just with a simple application of red paint and it just takes away the, the sort of two bits of metal thing I've also done it on this red box I've gone around and just touched in the corners so you can see if the bloody camera focus on the red box please you can see that I've taken away the, the sort of the folded photo etch box look it looks a more like a solid piece so what I need to do now is get my reference photos out and see what color everything else is and do some detail painting in here and then we'll um we'll come and see how it looks there's no point in me trying to show me detail painting this because I need to do it through a magnifier and uh, I need to maybe set something up so that I can put the camera side on so you can see you can watch me uh, just put some music on or something you can watch me do the detail painting Let's see what I can do. So um, I'll get that detail painting and I'll be back in a second. And I'm also really sorry, I'm aware there are many channels out there that say, right, this is what we're doing. We're going to go and do this now. And they come back, right, I've done that. And then we're going to do this. And they come back and I've done that. And I don't want to be one of those channels. I want to show you what I'm doing. I want to show you how it goes. So um, we shall I've also started another surprise beginner build or not beginners newbies so uh, keep your eyes peeled for that one so I'm gonna get my reference materials out get some painting done and then I'll be back right so that's that done all the detail painting is done as you can see I've added some more paint to those knobs and stuff we've done the little knobs down on the lower area there I've painted this pipe at the bottom in aluminium just to add a bit of interest um, obviously yeah it's got to be dry brushed and washed but as you can see, uh, like I said, once you get the paint on those photo etch knobs, there's one on there as well, you can see it does seem to um, really sort of make it look like a like a knob rather than a bit of metal folded in half. And then the same on this side, we've done the detail painting on the bits and pieces. I've also dry brushed in some of this wiring down here. But um, it's just all sort of looking busy, really. And when we put the 
the actual cockpit in next to it we can see that it all sort of in fact I need to check this because I'm not sure if that panel there is going to get in the way uh, we shall see look at that it just it just fits so there we go so as you can see now we have a very very busy cockpit which is what we wanted so um, as far as accuracy goes I'm not too sure but uh, I really did want it to be very very busy looking and as you can see on here um, in this little box here we've got holes drilled in there there's four holes drilled in there they're ready for the Anise uh, toggle switches but we'll do that after it's washed and everything um, and then on this side I fitted that small panel there which is going to have a couple of Anise knobs on it and also I think it's four toggle switches across the bottom is it four or five? It's four. So uh, there we go. So you can see that little panel. It's part of the air scale. Part of the air scale set. Talking about air scale, I've um, fitted the. If you remember, I used the air scale part and fitted it to the plastic compass. And we put the decal on the front of there. So that's got on with micro set and sole. So that should all be gone down nicely. Just like so. And then if we look here. That was the compass I just showed you. This is the front face of the compass. If I turn it over. If I turn it over, there you go. You can see there's the front face of the compass. And what I've done on the back, I've glued on a piece of acetate with super glue. Um, and we'll just let that dry overnight and then I'll sand the back flat. And then when I glue it on, I'll go around the edge with black super glue. And that will get that fixed in place. And that'll go on the front of there over that decal. And then that in turn will get fitted into that hole. If you remember I made a hole in the fuselage to fit that so we get a nice solid fit. I need to get that cockpit put away again so we don't damage it. Um, and that's that. So uh, lots of bits and pieces going on but it's going to be a very very busy cockpit which as I say is what we wanted. I've also got to do some detail painting down here I've just noticed which I wish I'd done when I had the wet palette out but we'll do that again. Uh, there may be decals to go on there or something we shall see. But um, I've got some burnt sienna oil paint here. You've, you've seen me do this loads of times, but for those that haven't, if, if you're doing your World War II American stuff, this is burnt sienna. This under here is LP16 deck tan, and then on top of it, it's got some uh, LP9. And what we can do here is just brush this, this burnt sienna on. And as you can see, the more you brush it out, the more you get a a sort of plywood look which is what we're after now it doesn't matter how it looks at the moment because we're going to play with it afterwards and that's why we put a gloss down or a semi-gloss I think it is actually which would be LP24 LP20 yeah LP24 um, so you can see that you see a lot of people do this and they put loads on you don't need to just put a little bit on and let it do its thing. We don't need to worry about that back edge because that back edge is, is invisible. And then here, as you can see, I've scribed a line across the middle because it comes down. So obviously it's two pieces of wood. This is basically where the, um, the belly gunner would lay. I'm assuming it's the same guy as in the turret. I'm, I don't know. I guess, the, I guess his main job was in the turret, but if they were on ground strafing or something, I guess he got onto this gun. I don't know. I'll have to have a look in the book. I'm sure that 500 odd book will tell me. So as you can see here, just putting that on, moving it around. Here we go. We don't have to worry about any wood effects or anything. Though having said that, we can get a nice sort of... would affect just by doing that you can see there but I mean, it's, it's, it's better to have um, it's better to have a, a sort of straight grain the other thing you can do is if you want to get a little bit of odorless thinners on the brush 
makes it all flow a bit more but the trouble is if you get it too wet it tends to um, soften the the grain so you end up it looks like a, a sort of washed piece of tanned plastic rather than a piece of wood and then if you want to you can vary it around like that you can go over with the stiffer brush you can grab a cotton bud just go over with the cotton bud cotton buds are amazing things for modeling you can just do that okay and then you can you know rather than have it all dead straight you can do some shapes and curves in it and get that sort of wood look but um it, and it's the beauty of it you can play with it you can i mean I, I will probably now leave this for a couple of hours let the oil dry and um and then do it again because then it won't move around so much What I really should be doing here is masking off one side because what I'm trying to do is make it like it's two different pieces of wood. I mean, for what we're going to see of it, it really doesn't matter. But if you go, you know, if you're doing a, a B17 or something, then it's very vis visible in the nose, and that you want to you want to get this just right so it looks amazing because the nose area is where a lot of people will look. On a B17. So there we go. As I say, if I mask this, I could brush over it and it would be a lot easier. Um, but I'm not masking it because it's not dry. But what I can do once it's sort of dry, I can put a, a post it note or something on there, do this side, and then put, put the post it note on that side and do that side and make it look like two bits of wood. As you can see, we got a slightly different tone on them. So there's our wood grain. Okay. And don't be tempted to try and make the grain too big, because remember this is 30 second scale. If you go and look at a piece of plywood, if you stand back two, three feet, it's very difficult to see the grain. So there's a bit of artistic license involved here, but be a little bit careful you don't go over the top. And that's just going to sit in there. In fact, it's like that that's going to sit in there like that so you can see that you're not going to see very much of it but uh, it does look great up against the green so there we go There we are. Okay, so I'll, say I'll leave that for a couple of hours <coughs> and then I'll have a little play with it again. Okay, next day now, and um, we've moved on a little bit. I've glued that front onto that compass, as you can see there, and then gone round, sanded the sides, and then gone round with some black paint. So we can that, get that fitted in a minute. Um, I've also fitted some toggle switches into this little side panel here that you can see. And there's a couple of knobs in there as well. You can't really see them because they're black on black, but they are there. So uh, that's all looking good. It all just adds up to just give the, the, the overall sort of really good look. Um, and on this side, we've put some toggle switches in that box there, just up on the side. So they're going to be quite visible through the cockpit. Um, for these, I've used the Anise. This is going to sound like a promotional video now, but it's not. It's just giving a shout out to some great products. Um, these are in these toggle switches. These are 132nd, 135th. You can also get them in 148th. Um, but don't worry about the, si the, the scale. It's the size you want. It's, I mean, if I did another one of these, I think I would probably use the 148th. Because on the instrument panel here, you can see all these toggle switches here. They're all kind of... Come on, camera. Focus there, please. You can see they're, they're kind of... Um, they're like a little bit overpowering. But... I guess down in a dark cop like this you need you need to think about the artistic side of things and you know it's okay having everything to scale and tiny and everything but you won't see it when it's all down in a dark cockpit so um and I think we can agree that this is looking you know with the air scale and the Edward and the Anise 
and the scratch building and all sorts. Um, and there's the, the two knobs I've got on there are these. These are dials and knobs. And you can see I've got some of those also on the instrument panel here. And we've also got the red ones down the bottom there. They're the, um, the toggle switches with the covers on. Uh, so, yeah, it's uh, all in all, I'm really happy with how it's coming out. Um, and then to do that, what I do, just to show you how I use these, um, in case you want to get yourself some, if you do have a 3D printer, you can actually buy the program from Tom over at Anise and print your own. So that's really cool. Um, so what I do, I get these. These are the Anise, again, Anise tweezers. These are the best tweezers I've, I've ever had. They are absolutely fantastic. And all you do is you come along and you can see on here we've got rows and rows of, of toggle switches. And all I do is come along with a pair of tweezers and just literally snap it off. Okay, so I've got it there. So you can see on the top is the actual toggle switch and on the bottom is the stem. And I just get that in my fingers and change over to hold the toggle switch at the top without grabbing my finger as well. Okay, and then just cut that off to length, make sure it's you know make sure it's shorter than the hole you've drilled, and then just dip it in a drop of super glue and stick it in. It's as simple as that. Um, I'll put that back on there rather than waste it. It really is, and, and obviously I've pre-painted them silver, which is the way to go. And uh yeah, really, really fantastic addition to any cockpit of any size in any scale. They're absolutely awesome. So um, really, really cool. So let's get this fitted. If you remember, we got this compass. This is the, the plastic kit part with the front cut off. And then I've got the Anise, um, not the Anise, the Airscale Photo Etch piece glued to it. And then we've got the decal, the acetate, and then the, the, the Photo Etch piece on the front. So there's quite a lot gone in there. I didn't like the compass as it was in the kit because I had the Anise bit to go on there. I thought it would look better. Um, and I didn't like the way, I keep saying Anise, the air scale. And the air scale photo etch piece had like a bracket that sort of had to glue into the side and I couldn't work out how to use it. So what I've done is just um, use the plastic part, drilled a hole in the side of it, and then we're using a piece of 0.8 brass. And then what we are going to do is put that in that hole, if I can get it in there. Go on, there we go, that's gone in. So that butts up against there like that. Let's just go butt up against that box. Get it nice and tight. That's how it goes, make sure it's square. There we go, that's good enough. Just do a quick check to make sure it's not gonna foul the instrument panel or anything. I'm sure it's not, because I've checked this before. But just no harm in double checking things. Here we go, we're all clear there. So you can see when we look down in there, we've got our the camera keeps focusing. It. You can see down in there, stop focusing on the bracket camera. You can see we've got a compass there on the instrument panel. For some reason today, the lighting is terrible. It's, I don't know why, it's really strange. Um, I don't know if it's this green with the light green background that's playing havoc with the camera or what, I don't know. So um, I'm sure we'll work it out. Maybe move the lighting around a bit. Hang on. There we go. That's better. So now you can see down in there. You can see you've got the instrument panels well clear of the, um, of the actual um, compass itself. So that's all good. It does look, looking at it here, it looks like I need to bring that up a bit and square the compass up. Um, so what I need to do is take the compass out and then grab a normal pair of tweezers and just bend, bend that up some more. Just see if I can get that to go on a bit of a better angle. There we go. That's better so we can get it nice and square now so what we need to do now is get some of our black super glue I'm going to come in from the back here because it won't be seen just 
put some there let that capillary in and then we'll get some on the outside as well and then that can capillary in and I think just to make sure it has gone in what we'll do is we'll give the compass a bit of a, a move about just to make sure it really is in there solid because we don't want it falling out do we there we go <clears throat> that's up like that so just give it a little twist so it's so it's not facing down it should face horizontal There we are. So if you've got the air scale set, that's how I recommend you do it. Um, because the air scale set has a bracket and you, you fold it, but there's nothing really straight for it to go on. I don't know where it was intended to fit, but um, you know, it was like a was kind of, <clears throat> you, know, you had the face here and then you had fold and a fold, but there was nowhere really to glue it to have it square. So that's why I've put the wire in there. But... Uh, Overall, I think with the combination, as I say, of the air scale, the Edward and the Anise, I think we get a fantastic job. Now, <clears throat> I think you could probably, I mean, the kit, if you go back and look right back at the beginning of this series, I built the cockpit three times. I built it stock, I built it with Edward, and then I built it with air scale, um, and then added the Anise and everything. Um, I would thoroughly recommend the uh, air scale set. The instrument panel is beautiful, as you can see. It really is nice um, but the kit I mean, out of the box I thought it looked absolutely brilliant so I'm thinking you know the kit with just some with these and these toggle switches and stuff I think that would look amazing uh, but the beauty of the air scale set is you get these side panels here going down the side and they've all they've got all the holes already drilled in them so it makes makes life a lot easier because you just literally stick them onto the plastic parts and then just drill through the metal holes which are your guide and then everything is all nice and straight and everything and even whereas the kit part has just got slightly raised dimples I'm guessing it would be quite difficult to draw them all straight but uh, there we go and for 20 quid I mean the um, the air scale set is a bargain so there we are right so that's ready to go um, so I think what we're going to do now is get some washes and a bit of dry brushing on here. Let's have a look at doing that. Okay, so for the washes, I would normally use these Modeler's World washes. Okay, and I will continue to use them, but apparently they're no longer available. I have been led to believe. I don't know if that's no longer available in the UK or if they've completely gone. I'll have to have a look. So what I'm going to do for now, I've got these two sets here. Um, and these are, this is, these are air weathering sets. They're MIG ammo. Um... And this makes me laugh the way they do this. They have a panel line wash blue grey, and this is a panel line wash for RLM 76 and 78. And then we have black knight, which is panel wash for sort of telling you what colour washes to use with what colour paints. Um, you don't need to worry about it, just use it. It's, you know, it's a dark grey, it's a light grey, it's a black, it's a, you know, you don't need to listen to what they're telling you. But out of these two, I've chosen. This is Black Knight, and this is Panelized Wash Black Knight, and this comes from this set. So it's Black Knight, it's for RLM 81 and 82. Um, I'm assuming they are dark greens, so I don't know. Um, and then we've got this one here, which is Stone Grey for Black. So they're saying on this one, with the black on the Lancaster, you use this. So I don't know. I'm going to have a look at both of them and see how they look. Do a bit of an experiment on the back here first. So let's have a look at this stone grey one and see how this looks. Uh, let me grab a brush. Here we go. This one here will do. Just the one, please. Thank you. When you are doing this, always make sure you use separate brushes. Don't use the same brush for your acrylics and everything. So I'm just going to put some of this in there and see how it looks. Just brush that down there and let it go around. But it should capillary along all the panel lines and everything. And we'll see how it looks when it's uh, when it's dry. I'm just going to wipe the brush off. Put the lid back on this. Always put the lids back on properly. Don't ever just pop the lid back on because you'll pick it up and knock it over. And what I'm going to do here 
is use this black one which I think may be a little bit OTT and I'm going to try that, in fact we'll try that on this side because in fact we'll try it just here I want to see what it looks like oh that actually looks quite nice so we can just brush that down there and it should capillary along all the all the edges there we go so you can see how they look but we're gonna let them dry never never judge a wash until it's dry because it will it will tone down a lot so you know you may look at this and think oh that black's way too harsh wait till you see it when it's dry we'll give it 10 minutes and I'll be back all right so this stuff is taking this has been about half an hour now it's taken a very long time to dry so what I've done I've come with the cotton bud and just sort of gone over to remove the excess and um I probably put too much on there and I've got to be honest I think I prefer this one to this one this is the black one the very very dark brown and this is the grey and I think I prefer the look of the grey it's a lot more subtle this is um this is very dark and very sort of you know it, it's it would be great on the exterior but I think on the interior it's going to be a bit much so I think what we'll do is we'll use this um this is stone grey it's called for black. I think what we'll do is grab some of this, get some on our brush and we'll just put some around the cockpit just let it sort of do its thing. You can hardly see it and that's the beauty of it, it's so subtle. One of the things with, with modelling if you are new to the hobby is it Subtlety is often your best friend. Um, I think actually we'll put some black along there. But we can basically brush this over everything. And it will give us a nice sort of dusty effect, I think. I think it's going to look really, really nice. It's, it's almost like a filter. It's going to sort of unify everything. You can see that in there. It's, it's, it's hardly noticeable and that's what makes it so nice is the fact that you can't really see it. Um, it's just, it's just adding some depth. By picking up on the details, it will just darken the edges of everything, and so you can see it in there. And uh, it's one of the things I I, I often see. I never criticise anyone's work. Um, if somebody asks me for criticism, I will give them an honest opinion where I think they could do better. But I am certainly no master of the. Uh, of the world of modeling and um, I am in no way qualified to comment on anyone else's work but the one thing I will say when it comes to pre-shading and post shading and you know this washing and panel lines and everything I do believe a lot of people go way over the top and uh, and you know they can take a perfectly good model and ruin it now what I'm going to do is just add some of this wash to here just to kind of unify everything. I'm just going to put some down in here and let it chase around just so that everything kind of is unified. Okay. I wonder if a bit in the seat would look good. What on earth is that there? A piece of plastic or something. I thought something had happened to the paint. In fact, that looks absolutely wonderful on that seat. Kind of. Can you see what I mean? It looks great. It gives it that. Sort of 
dusty, dirty look. Hmm, I do like that a lot. I wonder if we dab it with a cotton bud. Yeah, it gives us a, a sort of a dirty look. There we go. So, right, that's that. We'll let that dry. We'll probably give it a bit of a mop over with some. Um, in fact, I'm going to put some in the back as well. We'll probably give it a bit of a mop over with a cotton bud. I'm going to brush some down here. Brush some all along these joints. And just let it do its thing. Just like so. Probably putting a little bit too much on, but hey ho. There we go. Go up here as well. I'll do the same on the other side. And uh, you know, for what we're going to see, it's um, it's not really an issue. But we're also going to give it a, a flat coat. Blend everything down. I wonder what have a look on that uh, that little satchel there. See how that looks when it dries. But the beauty of using these these are basically enamels, or people call them oils, or whatever. The beauty of them is is they you can remove them at whatever stage you want to. If you don't like what you've done, you can go back and take it off. Um, and that is the beauty of of using these. Whereas with the um, acrylic washes, you've got to be really quick with working with them because they dry so fast. And then once they've dried, they're very difficult to remove. But these, um, you can just come in with a, a cotton bud with a bit of enamel thinners on it. Just wipe it over. As long as it's on top of acrylic paint, it'll be absolutely fine. You can just wipe it and remove it and everything. So, uh, so there we go. I'm going to put some in there as well. Not that it's ever going to be seen. There we are. I think what I'm going to do on that uh, pipe at the bottom of the cockpit there, I think I'm going to add some of the darker wash to give that the, so it'll look like a pipe rather than a, a D section moulded onto the side of the cockpit, which is what it really is. I don't know if you can see that, but it kind of gives it the effect. It looks like a pipe now. At least it will do when it's dry. Did I give that a shake? I'm not sure that I did, do I? You must give these very regular shakes. They will settle down very quickly. I've got a feeling I didn't shake that. So what I'm going to do is just mop that up, what I've just put down. And we're going to put some more down. Oh yeah, that's better. I forgot to shake it, duh. There we go, you can see now we've got that black shadow in there which will give that real appearance of being a pipe rather than um, <clears throat> rather than just being a um, a D section moulded in. We just touch on those cables as well just to bring them out. go. We can see that's looking lovely. I think what I might do as well is just drop on there just to pick up that detail in there. And also just go over those toggle switches because the wash will just pick up the the flanges around their bases. And there we go, that is that. I'm going to let that dry and then we'll probably go over the cotton bud and then we'll give it a matte coat and then our cockpit will be finally done. There we go, it's had a very very light dry brushing so you can see we get that kind of kind of worn effect on it just to give it that sort of just to, it's a this is a brush that's been in um, 
Mr. Metalizer Aluminium. And it's literally, it's been like that for, what, three months? And I literally, you, you can see, if you, if you brush over, you can see there is literally nothing on the brush. It's, it's just the slightest, slightest change in, in tonality. It's, it's, um, I do it on that black cover there where we've got those. As you can see, there's, there's it's hardly anything coming off at all. So that's, that's my magic for dry brushing. Uh, so now what we need to do is just give it a quick flat coat flat coat, a fat coat even, and then we can call this cockpit done. So I'm just going to very lightly go over it. This is Tamiya LP23 and this will knock everything back. I'm staying away, I'm not going to spray the front of that compass because I don't want to get rid of the, the shiny acetate. But as you can see that's just knocking back any sheen and it really makes everything pop, all the oils and everything will pop. moving around so I don't get any build up anywhere and as you can see I, I can see I don't know if you can see it on the camera but it really does make all the dry brushing and the oils and everything just pop so there we go so I can plop that in there just plop that in there like that and we can see we have a pretty respectable cockpit now what I'll do is I'll put some pictures up at the end with some music because I want some pictures of this because once it's closed up we're never going to see it again not, not really um, but it's been a lot of work but I believe absolutely well worth it when you look at that you know that looks, looks good doesn't it and when it's closed up this kit is such a beautiful fitting kit it is lovely I've got to do that rod before we close the fuselage halves up. But there we go. I mean, you, it's difficult to see down in there because my lighting's so bad. But uh, you can see it's very, very busy with all the levers and everything in there. And I mean, you can look at this and then decide from here what you what you think you want to add or what you want to don't want to add or whatever. I think it's all worth doing. I don't know if I mentioned it just now, but I've been talking to Neil. Um, regarding the A20JK Boston. Yes, there's going to be a Boston in the box. Um, and he's confirmed that he's actually moved the instrument panel back now. I'm just going to put some dry brushing on here just to highlight that control column a bit. There we go. You need to be really careful with dry brushing. You've got all this detail on here, all these little levers and everything sticking out everywhere. I'm just going to give those a little nudge out because they've been pushed in. And the same with that one. And there we go. Lots and lots of work but boy oh boy well worth it in my opinion. So we'll call that a day for there. That's the cockpit done. As I say there'll be some pictures up now with a drop with a bit of music. Um, just give that another dry brush because it will pick up better on the flat than it will on the gloss. And, uh, and there we go. What I may actually do is where I've dry brushed these edges of these knobs here have gone sort of silvery. I may just touch those up with a bit of black um, just to get the silver look off of them. But uh, overall, really, really pleased. This I think this is um, Hong Kong Models best without a doubt. Their best ever, without a doubt. So I've also got to put some back coat on here. As you can see that wood grain is all done. Got some bits in there, just get those off and then just seal in that oil paint. And then we can start to look at weathering that. I'll do the edge as well. So that's that done. We can look at weather in that. So I'm going to go on now, as you know, I've got all the wash in here. Um, <clears throat> I'll go on and assemble all this rear end there because you've seen me put all that together once. Uh, you don't need to see that again. And then we'll um, we'll get a flat coat and everything going and everything back here. We'll finish off painting the machine gun. So the next video will be this all done. 
and then we can start to get the fuselage all closed up and we've got I'm not sure if I'm going to bother I'm not sure how much we're going to see but uh, yeah I think I will put some um, cables in some breathers in from those battery boxes and uh, may, I may well do that as you can you can actually see up in there so for the time it's going to take it's worth doing so it just needs to be a couple of wires just coming out, just ending up here somewhere and then they'll disappear in behind that bulkhead. So all this pipe work I had in here was an absolute waste of time because you can't see any of it. I suppose you can see that one. But uh, you certainly can't see very much up in there. Right, I will see you all soon for part, whatever the next one is. 17 is it? Is this 17? I can't remember now. So I'll see you all soon. Thank you for watching. And as I say, stick around, there'll be some photos and some music, and uh, we'll go from there. Bye!